How do we balance longing for that day with the call we have to live for Christ today? You know, for me, I'm looking forward to going to heaven. But in the meantime, I'm looking forward to living my life. Yeah. I love this story about a little boy who was in a class one day and the teacher said, how many of you want to go to heaven? And everybody in the class raised their hand but this little boy. And the teacher walked back and she said, Johnny, don't you want to go to heaven when you die? He said, oh yes, ma'am, when I die, but I thought you were getting up a load for tonight. <laughs> you know, that's how I feel. You know, I want to go to heaven when the right time comes. But you know what? You can be so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Yeah. My goal is to go to heaven and take as many people with me as I can. And that's what I want to do. Rapture, as we all know, is one of the most significant and mysterious events foretold in the Bible. Described as the moment when the good will be separated from the bad, this event could change everything we know about the end times. For the followers of Jesus Christ, his second coming is not just a hope, but a critical turning point in human history. But what if there's a hidden difference between his second coming and the rapture that you never noticed? There are crucial details that many overlook when discussing the rapture. What are these details? And how can they prepare us for what's to come? In today's episode, we're going to unveil the mysteries behind this event and reveal what you need to know to be ready. What is the rapture? Before diving into the deep secrets of the rapture, it's essential to understand what this event truly signifies. According to David Jeremiah, the rapture is the jaw-dropping concept that states that when Christ returns, all believers will be instantly snatched up or raptured to meet the Lord in the air. The corpses of deceased Christians will be miraculously raised and all believers, living and dead, will be glorified. As stated directly in 1 Thessalonians and more subtly in passages like 1 Corinthians and John and further echoed in Matthew, 2 Thessalonians and Revelation, this is no ordinary event. David Jeremiah further explains that God's ultimate redemptive plan is to restore what Adam lost, to reclaim his authority over creation through a humanity that lives in proper relationship with him. The resurrection of Christians is a crucial part of that restoration. As Paul explains in Romans 8, therefore, the rapture is not just an event, it's a pivotal moment in God's plan to reset the world. However, the scriptures also warn that before the creation of the messianic kingdom at Christ's return, God will unleash his wrath on a world that opposes his reign. The church, however, will be given a miraculous refuge from this wrath, and the rapture is how believers will be shielded from the coming storm. But here's where it gets even more intriguing. There are diverse theories on how this event will unfold. Some believe that Christ's return and the rapture will not occur until after the seven years of tribulation have passed. According to this view, the rapture will not be a secret event, but will be part of Christ's visible and triumphant return in this current evil age. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, interpreters debate whether Christ will reign on earth for a literal thousand years, or if the white throne judgment and the new heaven and earth will arrive instantly. It's important to note that not every Christian agrees on every aspect of what will happen at the end of this world. Some of these events and their exact order are shrouded in mystery, as the Bible doesn't fully explain them. But here's the one undeniable truth. All Christians believe that Christ will return bodily, visibly and gloriously to reign and rule with his resurrected and transformed saints for all eternity. The stunning facts of this historic occurrence will be revealed in God's own time. According to Dr. David Jeremiah, knowing the prophecy is a path to divine blessing. There's a reward, what you might call a heavenly blessing, for those who follow Jesus Christ and seek out his prophecies. Just knowing about the events that will soon take place is in itself a great blessing. Although the exact time of these events is only known to God, Dr. David Jeremiah highlights that those who read, hear and apply Jesus Christ's revelation from the Bible's final book will receive a unique and beautiful benefit. 
Revelation, the unveiling of Jesus Christ, was given to his servant so that he could, in turn, tell other servants about the magnificent events that will soon unfold at the end of all things. Jesus sent this message via his angel to his born servant John for our divine instruction. As followers of Jesus Christ, we should rejoice and be grateful for the blessing given to those who hear, read and take to heart all that is written in Revelation. As stated in Revelation 1.3, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it, for the time is near. Many people dismiss the book of Revelation as fanatical or unknowable. Some focus on the supernatural elements or subscribe to wild conspiracy theories, while others refuse to study the book for fear of being labelled as New Age or globalist. But here's the startling truth. Revelation is not a strange, magical, apocryphal book full of hidden messages. It's not a closed book containing secret codes for a select few. Revelation is an apocalyptic event, an unveiling, a disclosure, an open book given to let us know what will soon take place. And those who read it and take to heart the truths it contains are promised a very unique blessing, according to David Jeremiah. Revelation was intended for public reading as the final chapter of Scripture, not just for individual believers. It should be preached from pulpits and studied by God's people because it is a tool that God has provided to fine-tune our appreciation and comprehension of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's been given to help us better understand God's divine intentions and His purpose for the world's redemption, and to inspire us to live virtuous lives. As the end approaches, Revelation also stands as a book of prophecy, much of which has yet to be fulfilled. It speaks of the coming tribulation period after the church has been raptured into heaven, a time when God's wrath will be poured out on a world that has rejected his offer of salvation and must now face its just punishment. So what David Jeremiah is trying to tell us here is that we should pay close attention to the content of the book of Revelation and be on the lookout for Christ's return, as well as be spiritually alert and recognize that the time of the end is drawing ever closer. But there are many in the church today who dismiss the important content of this wonderful apocalyptic book and miss out on the blessing it offers because they believe it is too difficult to understand the difference. A lot of the people who believe in Jesus Christ and everything that Jesus has taught think that the rapture and the second coming are the same events. However, according to David Jeremiah, that's not the case. There's a slight difference between the two this is one of prophecy's greatest misconceptions. The rapture and the second coming are often confused, but they are distinct events with distinct purposes. On God's prophetic timeline, first, the rapture occurs when Christ returns and takes every living Christian, as well as all those who have died to heaven with him. Paul discusses the rapture in 1 Thessalonians 4. Writing for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. The rapture is God's protection of his saints from the tribulation, the seven years of judgment that will then be poured out on earth. There are some who argue the tribulation period will begin before the rapture, However, the Bible says that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.1 You know, I believe the church will not experience the judgment that God has planned for that time. Finally, at the end of the seven years, the Bible says Jesus comes back. This is his second coming. This time he comes to earth not as a child, but as the powerful and glorious king of the universe, surrounded by all of his saints. According to David Jeremiah, seven years after the rapture, Jesus will return to earth in the event known as the second coming. His return will be entirely different from his arrival in Bethlehem. As a humble child, when Christ returns, he will appear as the exalted king of the universe, surrounded by his saints. 
the powers of evil will be quickly defeated at the Battle of Armageddon, and then Christ will establish his everlasting kingdom on earth. The tribulation, a time of hardship. The thing that's going to take place right after the rapture is the period of great worry and distress, the tribulation. According to David Jeremiah, this is going to be a kind of time that will happen when there will be nothing in the world but sin. Those who didn't follow Jesus Christ or didn't even bother to hear his words, which were the words of God, will be the ones whom the wrath of God will take place. So what do we need to understand with the tribulation? The seven-year tribulation begins following the rapture of the church. The church will not have to face this wrath as it is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5.9. The seven-year tribulation is the major event in which God completes his job of judging nations. The tribulation represents the final opportunity for unbelievers to accept Jesus. Israel is the focus of the tribulation, but God is asking all unbelievers to accept him throughout this time. Unfortunately, some people will reject Jesus throughout the tribulation and refuse to acknowledge his lordship. The tribulation will be a period of suffering, fear and wrath. It is important to note that God, not Satan, is responsible for the tribulation. The vengeance that is poured out on the world will be God's. The tribulation is sometimes called the day of the Lord, as it says in Joel. Daniel 9 describes in full the events of the tribulation, including God's anger, the Antichrist, and the duration of the tribulation. The first half of the tribulation will be terrible, but the second half will be far more severe. So what will actually take place during this time of great worry? According to Matthew, the Great Tribulation will consist of a sequence of intense and unparalleled catastrophes. This period will be characterized by unprecedented agony and distress, unlike anything witnessed before or since. Believers will experience tremendous persecution, with many martyred for their faith, and false prophets will emerge to deceive many people. Daniel foresaw a big event called the Abomination of Desolation, which will most likely involve the desecration of the holy place, which is the temple. Natural disasters, such as wars, famines and earthquakes, will strike in various locations. Adding to the chaos, false messiahs and prophets will emerge, performing great signs and wonders to deceive even believers. Following the tribulation, Cosmic disturbances such as the darkening of the sun and moon and stars falling from the sky will occur. People in Judea are advised to flee to the mountains when these events begin. A survival will be challenging for the sake of the elect. The days of tribulation will be shortened to prevent total destruction. However, it will end after the seven years that are declared in Daniel. After these seven years, Jesus will return with believers to destroy all unbelievers in the Battle of Armageddon. What should you be doing till you're here? One of the biggest lessons that we can learn from Christ's teaching is how we can be good human beings while we stay here on earth. And that's what David Jeremiah is telling us here. Consider the period references throughout the book of Revelation as it discusses things that are near at hand. The final controversy is whether Jesus' words in the Olivet Discourse and the Book of Revelation were primarily referring to events that would occur in the first century, culminating in the fall of Jerusalem and the exile of the Jews. That's one viewpoint. Another viewpoint is that all of this refers to far future events. Then some individuals claim they refer to both as if there were a primary and secondary reference. As a result, putting everything together becomes quite difficult, regardless of when Revelation was written. What it refers to, or the Olivet Discourse, we continue to look forward to Jesus' return. He hasn't arrived yet, but we have great hope because every day brings him closer to returning. And in the meantime, while we're living here, we should be living our lives as Jesus told us, as we are told that the millennial rule of Christ will be magnified. Since Jesus will truly walk with humanity again, despite Jesus' bodily rule as king, mankind will continue to reject him 
and follow Satan. There will still be death in life in the Millennial Kingdom as new babies are born. But for that we need to strive harder because of our sin. We are under God's wrath. Our wages are death. But Jesus came to set us free from the shackles of sin and death. All who believe in him shall have eternal life. As it is mentioned in John, the salvation comes from God's mercy by faith, not through works. Even so, all people will face an ultimate reckoning with Jesus, the judge of all people. Believers will stand before Christ's judgment seat to be rewarded for loyal Christian work or to lose the rewards God planned for us. This is not a judgment of our sins and no one will lose their salvation because Jesus was judged for us on the cross. Rather, it is a chance to give an account of our lives before Jesus and receive his rewards for our faithfulness. Let us know what your thoughts are on this in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to like the video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel to keep up with the most amazing content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.